Welcome to Conversations with Tom Shorkey. Conversations explores the past, the present, and the future of the communities in which we live through the eyes of interesting individuals. Now let's join our host, Tom Shorkey. Welcome to Conversations. I'm Tom Shorkey, your host for today's program. And so often on Conversations, I do a little introduction and tell our audience at home, oh, you'll know this person. And, uh, but more importantly, if you don't know him, you know his dog, Max. I am so happy to uh, welcome to today's show our guest, Bill McDonald. Thank you, Tom. Glad, glad you could come by today, Bill. Uh, I'm glad to be here. And we'll, we'll talk Max a little bit later, but uh, when anybody talks about Bill McDonald Ford, they always want to know where's the dog. But, I know, I get that all the time. Now, Bill, you've been in business for a long time. We're going to talk about that also. But you know what people in St. Clair, Marine City, East China area, they don't know about early life Bill McDonald. Where where'd you grow up? Well, Tom, I grew up in the Mount Clemens area, graduate of one of the first graduates of Lance Cruz High School, and uh, got married in 1966 and uh, pursued the car business shortly after. Now, was, when you got out of Lance Cruz High School, right down the road from Luigi's, one of my favorite restaurants. That's for sure. The, uh, did you go right into the car business or did you do something first? Well, I got trained by selling candy and tobacco in Detroit. We did deliveries to a lot of the major hotels like the Book Cadillac and Sinbad's Restaurant and all of the Hamtramck area. And that got me accustomed to working with people mainly business people, so that was a good thing, and the exposure to the big city. And then you felt selling was in your blood. When did you start trying to sell automobiles? Well, in 1967, I started selling and I sold Chevrolets for a while. Um, I was going to be an attorney, and my wife got pregnant for our son David, who is an attorney, okay. and... Uh, I decided that I would take a, a shot at selling cars temporarily till I found something better 50 years ago. Well then how does a guy selling Chevrolets in the Mount Clemens area end up being a Ford dealer? Well, I, I tried to get a Chevrolet dealership, but uh, they wanted to keep me on as a salesman because I was a, a really good Chev a salesman. Um, so my wife, I came home one day and my wife said, why don't you write a letter to Ford and see if they'd like to do something with you. And uh, sure enough, Ford Motor Company contacted me and here I am. And that dealership out of the blocks was where? Marine City. Yeah. The right first, across from City Hall. I right believe. across from City Hall. was a, It's Ender's uh, carpet now. Yes. Real small building, but a great start. Now, you... Uh, you were in Marine City, and that when I think the auto show has a plaque for you this year about being 40 years in a dealership. So when I do the math and I back up 40 years from today, that means it was like late 70s, early 80s. Interest rates were through the roof. The country was in a recession. Did you ever think you were going to be able to survive being a new car dealer at that time? Well, a lot of people say to me, what a terrible time to start. 21% interest rates. Dealers were falling nationwide one after another. I think it was the best time to start because it was the best training that anybody could ever have. Um, if you could survive that period, you, the rest would be... Pretty much, hmm. yeah. It was, it was a tough time. Now, for a while, there was Bill McDonald Ford in Algonac. When did that come into play? That came along in 1986. Ford uh, offered me the second store. And uh, in the beginning, I didn't want it. I was complacent with St. Clair, where I went in 81. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, my wife said, why don't you take a shot at it? And we ended up being the longest uh, Ford dealer in, in the Algonac area. We were there 16 years. And then my wife got sick, and I decided it was time to scale back, and I had to do some traveling with her. So when you did, um, you were in Marine City, and when you got the St. Clair dealership, did, 
did Marine City dealership move to the St. Clair, or did you run to it at that time before no, Algonac? No, the, the thing was with the bad economy that mm -hmm. we had, Ford said to me, if we close Marine City, will you acquire the dealer that's in St. Clair? Okay. And he had some health issues at the time, and he wanted out, and it made it good for me because it gave me the total area of St. Clair and, and Marine City. So you uh, got into the dealership the way that you did in Marine City, ended up segueing into St. Clair. Is that even possible now in modern automotive uh, corporate existence that a so-called individual guy could write a letter, get an interview, and find some financing and open a dealership? Is that possible? It's possible. It's not as likely as when I became a dealer. Most of the dealerships today are second and third generation families. That's why the names seldom change. Um, although there are guys that have made it, you know, real well selling cars or managing dealerships, and the dealer takes them because he doesn't have a, another mm -hmm. family member to take over, and he'll take them and let them cut in on, you know, buying yeah. a percentage, maybe 10 or 20 percent, and then buy him out at some point. Not real common today, yeah. but it has happened. Bill, with um, seeing you were in the business, 80s and 90s, and, and before the internet, before everybody was walking around with an iPhone in their hand, what's the, what's the big difference between how a dealership was operated 30 years ago as compared to today? What's the big difference? Well, number one, the younger people uh, don't have the interest in cars and trucks that I had, or probably you had. Yeah. Um, they're more into digital things, you know, into the computer world, and that makes it a little hard. But it, the other point is, it's just, there's no merchandising in today at all. I mean, I think we do a great job of merchandising our new and used cars, but very seldom does somebody stop because of what we put out front. They do it all by the computer, they locate a car that we may have, mm -hmm. and that's how they come in. And that, the positive thing of that is, we attract from a much wider area. Oh, if we good. have a real rare vehicle, let's say it's a, a van with, for handicapped people, mm -hmm. which we kind of specialize in, um, they will come to us for those. Yeah, that, that's uh, interesting. What about, um you know, way back, and I'm going to say way back, uh, and it may have been 30, 40, 50 years ago, the old reputation of the sly used car salesman type thing. Tell me what makes a good salesman and, and why that isn't an issue anymore. Well, number one, I don't think it ever was. I never honored that, and I worked with some guys that I wouldn't buy a car from yeah. way back. Today, I tell everybody, honesty, integrity, you know, treat the customer the way you want to be treated. And that's what I find most salespeople to be like today. Straightforward. Straightforward, uh, no BS with the, with the customer. What about um, <clears throat> most challenging aspect today? Because as you say, the internet, people are shopping for that particular color expedition or explorer and whatever but what what is the biggest challenge today for a dealer probably the biggest challenge is uh, you see it on the news all the time is they're going to try to go to self-driving cars autonomy and um, electrification with cars we haven't up here in a rural area we have not been real successful with electric cars people still want that gas or diesel engine in it to push mm -hmm. them around um, I think we're fortunate up here because the people up here have a real interest in a vehicle. Now maybe in the inner city, the kids that move to the inner city, they don't have the need for a yeah. car. They can use Uber or yeah. whoever and get a ride to wherever they want to go and cut out the expense of a car. But I don't see that happening up here. And I, that's why I think we've got a lot of longevity here. What um, it, it appears that most of the major car companies are kind of uh, doing away with cars and everybody seems to want an SUV, a crossover, or a pickup truck. Um, is, the, is the car dead? No, I don't think it's dead. And I think one thing they leave out of the equation 
is the factories that they are building today have a platform, in other words, a chassis, that will accommodate either a car body or an SUV body or, you know, a truck body. And so they know that if the hemlines change, for mm -hmm. those of you that don't know what hemlines are, mm -hmm. when the lady's skirt changes from mini to long or vice versa, it doesn't take long, it happens overnight. What about, uh, what's the most uh, enjoyable part about your day uh, working at your dealership in St. Clair? What? Tom, what it's the most enjoyable part is the people. The people that work for me, the customers, visiting with them. Um, that part, I, I just could, that's why I've stayed with it so long. It's just important to me to, to socialize with the people and get their view on things, just like you're getting my view on things. Well, you know, and I did see an interview you did with Channel 4, because you've been honored uh, 40 years as a dealer. Uh, and uh, you said something that you hope to be interviewed again when you hit the 50 mark. Are you, are you your long-range plans are well, hanging that's, out as long as you can? That's God's choice, but my long-range plans are, yeah, as long as I can come to work every day, even if it isn't for a full day, is to be in, you know, in the inner circle and be around people. Now, I have seen on different occasions, uh, oh, you had, I don't know if it was a 60 or 61 Ford convertible, I think it was black with red interior or something. Then you had that old pickup on the lot. If there's one Ford vehicle that said, Bill, you got to drive this vehicle for the next six months, what, what's your favorite Ford vehicle of all time? Well, I'm going to age myself because I like sports cars, mm -hmm. the, either the Mustang GT, mm -hmm. but, which is current today, but the car that I really loved was the Thunderbird back in the 50s. And, oh. you know, when they were the two-seaters? Two-seaters. It was a, competing with the Corvette. And All right, now this is a tough question for a Ford guy, but if there was one car you had to drive that wasn't made by Ford, what would you like to slip behind the wheel of? Well, you know, I'm a, again, I said a sporty guy. I like sports cars. I think the Jaguar, which Ford Motor Company did own at one time, um, both, both the larger Jaguar and the little Roadster, I think, are really neat cars. All right, that's cool. What about um, if I went to your dealership and at random grabbed an employee out of the back room, front room, and said, describe Bill McDonald, what do you think they'd say? Well, I don't know what they'd say, but I'd like to think that they'd say fair, and uh, you know, he, I'm, he's fair with us, and he he takes the time to visit with us about maybe it's sports or family matters, because uh, I really do have a concern for the employees. Without a good employee, you will not continue on in business. They're the most important asset you have today. Who's been a big influence in your life, Bill? The biggest influence I have is the one that made me a Ford dealer, my wife of 52 years, Diane. Great. Good answer. How about when a new car goes out the door on the corner of Kearney and Fred Moore, what's the percentage nowadays of lease versus people who outright purchase? Probably in our area here, or in even more in the metro area, but we're over 80% people leasing a car. I even have people in their 80s that come in and they say, well, this will probably be my last car, what should I do? And I tell them, well, you know, you could lease it for two or three years and God willing, you could cut, return it and get another one. Well, and especially at the price of, when you get a, a maxed out Ford 150 pickup, 50 grand or more, I don't know, but yeah, I could see where a lease might be an attractive option. Tom, when I started selling cars and trucks, we would deliver new trucks for $2,000. Today I walk on the lot and the average truck is probably forty-five dollars to $50,000. Wow. That Big a, difference. Whoa, that's amazing. Uh, family, we talked about your wife, we talked about your son. Tell us what your daughter's doing. My daughter, Michelle, has been with me for 25 years. She went to Northwood Institute, which is pretty much a car dealer business school, and that's what she does. She does the business portion, gets the op opportunity to contact every customer and deliver every customer. And she's real good with people, very good. People like her a lot. 
Now, the other member of the family we alluded to at the start of the show, Mr. Max. Max. Max is a Habishan. Uh, he was given to us when he was six months old because they couldn't handle him. Um, we found out at very early that he was very photogenic. He loves being around people and he just, so somebody said to me, why don't you put him in the commercials? And he's been doing it for 11 years. Well, I know, and he's been, whether it's uh, hot air balloons, uh, airplanes, driving vehicles with you in the passenger seat uh, is a uh, significant part of the advertising program, I would think. He is, and aside from that, I love him. He's just, he's a great pet. He's, he's with me all the time. He does come to work with me every day, and it's, uh, you know, they say that uh, dogs are a man's best friend. I believe that. Well, that's good. If Matt, you can tell that when, when Max is padding around the dealership. I mean, he, he likes everybody. He does. And we don't know how many cars he's actually sold, but I have heard that people do come to the dealership, and the first question is, where's Max? I'll have grandparents bring their grandchildren in with a treat for Max. They want to meet Max because they see him on TV. The... Uh, if you were going to give advice to somebody that was going to go into the automotive business, dealership, salesperson, what, what kind of advice would you give after all this time selling cars? Well, I think it's important, again, to be honest with the people. Uh, now obviously, you need a lot of personality, which my people do have a lot of mm -hmm. personality. Um, a lot of my people have been with me a long time. They've built up a great clientele. Uh, I have a gal that's, well, I won't say how old, but she's elderly. And every, almost all of her customers that come in, they hug each other. So that, mm -hmm. that's, that's a nice thing to see. Now, does corporate Ford Motor Company put any kind of pressure on local dealers? I mean, what, uh, do they have expectations or quotas? or How, how do you keep uh, Dearborn happy? How do you keep Dearborn happy? Number one, I think uh, facility is a very important thing, a clean, nice facility. Uh, number two, that you do what they expect you to do as far as selling cars and servicing cars, keeping service customers happy. Um, and if you do all those things, it's a lot like in high school. If you're, if you're an honor roll student, I think the principal will stay away from you. Yeah, good. All right. Uh, it's been our pleasure today to have Bill McDonald, a uh, longtime uh, business owner in our area. He's done a lot for our community uh, uh, in a number of uh, uh, ventures. He's a solid citizen. He's got a great operation over there on the corner of, on Kearney Drive. And uh, it's our pleasure to have Bill as our guest today. And next time, you need to bring Max. I'll bring Max. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Bill. You've been watching Conversations with Tom Shorkey. Conversations explores the past, the present, and the future of the communities in which we live through the eyes of interesting individuals. If you have an idea for a future conversation, please contact us at www.watchctv.org. Thanks for watching Conversations with Tom Shorkey.